welcome to the GamerCast Network Video Game Show, episode 190? 189. 189. Yeah, you, there's me, and there's that other guy, and the third guy. Yes, yes, and yes. Phil and Chad. Hi. Hello. Hi. Howdy. This week on the GamerCast Network, Podtacular is doing a double take this week. First, about the IGN interview with the multiplayer design leads Bungie. Then, turn in live Thursday as they send off Halo 2 with a bang. Blade from the Bad Dudes joins episode 97 of the Post Game Report for discussion about the Gears of War 3 announcement. Discover the community that brings you all these great podcasts and more at GamerCastNetwork.com. Okay, so this week, Phil, two weeks ago you were at PAX East in Boston. Yes, PAX East Boston. Um, it it kind of turned out to be pretty much the uh, Xbox 360 show, in my opinion. Nintendo had a pretty poor showing, and Sony was nowhere to be seen on the PAX showroom floor at all. Unbeknownst to many people, they had uh, some special meet and greet on Thursday night, which was basically a non-PAX event where they were showing off the Move system, which is the motion sensing kind of like the the Wiimotes and whatnot. So I guess they got uh, like a small conference room at a, at a hotel and slam-packed about 300 people in to display it. And I guess it was like a two-hour thing, and uh, they packed up and left Boston. So, yeah, they weren't in the uh, convention center at all. It was kind of disappointing. Hmm. They were scared. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Nintendo had some things, a lot of DS games, some Pokemon stuff, um, some Wii games that really didn't catch anybody's eye from what I was gathering from people that I spoke with. A, a lot of it was hardware. Um, they even had some colleges on site recruiting for uh, uh, animation and, and programming. A lot of tabletop games. Um, they actually even had a, a live... Uh, tutorial on how to play D and D. So basically, they had uh, a floor mat that was probably like eight by eight feet, and they had people, you know, standing in the in the hexes and or squares and whatnot, and they were basically teaching people how to play D and D. So it was like a real live board action version of D and D, where you had just standing around, moving around, and right, exactly. So they had uh, like a monster. So they had like a cutout of a like a four foot tall gargoyle. So that was like the thing that they. they that you had to fight, and uh, the DM would kind of walk you through and show you which ways you can walk and uh, what spells and stuff you can cast. So it was kind of interesting. There was uh, a lot of stuff from Wizards of the Coast for um, Magic the Gathering, the card game, uh, and the new Magic the Gathering, uh, the Planeswalker game that they're redoing. They had a pretty good size booth for that. As far as everything else, it seemed like most everything else was made for or geared towards the Xbox 360, whether it was um, arcade games or uh, independent titles. Some of the games that really stood out, in my opinion, were the full release titles were Prince of Persia. Uh, that really stood out. They actually had kind of a, a pretty big stage where... Uh, Ubisoft had the frag dolls doing demos of the game and whatnot, so uh, they had a big giant screen to do the demo on, and uh, some of the moves looked really, really cool, and the uh, special effects were really, they had that wow effect to them. Like there was a, a, I guess the key to the Prince of Persia is there's the four elements, so you got earth, wind, fire, and water. So basically, you, you've got those elemental attacks. So if you use air, there's like this big giant tornado vortex that just kind of consumes the room and everything kind of swirls around. And just the, the special effects were like really, really eye-popping. Microsoft also had a big Crackdown 2 uh, setup where they had uh, 16 TVs where there were uh, eight systems were set up for... Uh, team Deathmatch, and they had eight systems set up for something they call uh, Rocket Tag. That sounds dirty. Yeah. Rocket Tag? Yeah, so basically everybody's got Rocket Launcher, and uh, one person basically uh, grabs the orb and kind of runs as long as they can, kind of like a King of the Hill type of deal. As long as you have the orb, you're, you're gaining points, but then 
You're trying to frag the person that's got the orb. And yeah, that's not new. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I mean that that that's we've that, that they've had that in death matches before. <clears throat> they had that in Unreal Tournament. And that's exactly what I felt. It felt a lot like Halo and Unreal Tournament. Uh, a lot of vertical movement, you know, bounding over buildings and whatnot. Now, Phil, you played the original Crackdown, right? Uh, not too much, no. I played it a lot. But you played a lot, but well, you weren't there at PAX, Ivan. So I was going to ask Phil if he could compare it to the original Crackdown, but uh, he really can't. Mm, no, I can't compare it, but a lot of people were saying that they really liked it. Uh, Rockstar's got a new one coming out called uh, Red Dead Revolver. Uh, the sequel to that one, it's called uh, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, it's a Western game, first-person shooter. Um, it, it, we got to play it a little bit, Twig and I, and we both seem to really like it. Just a uh, completely different setting uh, for a first-person per shooter. So uh, just to break up the monotony of the the post-apocalyptic in the, the modern warfare and army-type games uh, with the shooters. So it's kind of refreshing to see a different scenario. Okay, let's get to the important game. Let's get to Puzzle Quest 2. Yes, Puzzle Quest 2. That one is going to be for Xbox and for the DS. Um, from what I saw, they had the uh, Xbox Live version, um, and it looks really phenomenal. It's uh, pretty much the same head-to-head -head match uh, gameplay with uh, the Bejeweled-type gameplay. But as far as uh, navigating throughout the world, it's not like the first one at all. Not like how you had to travel certain paths. Uh, it was kind of like a uh, free world, uh, walking around from uh, building to building, town to town. And the graphics look really cool uh, for a simple game like Puzzle Quest. So it's more of a free roaming kind of game? Correct. So it's not like you have a path to go either north, north, south, east, or west. It was uh, You can just go any direction? Any direction, any building that you want to. And did it look like you got into like random battles in the field, or was it like could you see enemies? Or from what I saw the demo, it looked more like uh, when you entered the buildings is more of when you were uh, encountering people for the the battles. But that's not to say if you walked into somebody in the in the open world that it couldn't happen. And the actual core game itself just still looks the same. Nothing really changed. Still gems and skulls and. Uh, it still looks the same. They they tweaked it a little bit you know made it look a little prettier but it's it's pretty much puzzle quest and did you play it or did you just watch it uh, i just got to watch it they only had uh two machines going with that but uh yeah it looks really good uh, speaking of watching and playing how how much of a chance did you get to play things because when we went to pax two years ago the lines were enormous you had to wait Hours. Yeah, that kind of uh, something that should be spoken about. The entire weekend was sold out, quote unquote sold out. So the layout was on three different floors in the uh, convention center. And the middle floor, the second floor had, had the main showroom and the main theater. And there were certain displays that had long waits. The Red Dead Redemption had a long wait, um, but they were kind of moving everybody along pretty quick. Let's see, who else? 2K Games had uh, Mafia 2 and Bioshock 2 on display, and that was kind of a long wait. But most other uh, games didn't really take too long to wait for. Like Crackdown 2, that was pretty short wait, considering they had so many consoles going at the same time. Uh, the other thing that I noticed was people were getting more involved and taking time to go sit at the panels, which pretty much freed up the the show floor quite a bit too with that said the showroom floor was a lot smaller than what we're, we're used to seeing at uh the seattle convention center the showroom floor was maybe i'd say overall a third of the size of the seattle showroom floor but since they had so many different things going on like the panels and the and the and the uh classic arcades on the third floor i mean they had stuff to do all over the place thing that was kind of disappointing was uh, the enforcers kind of didn't really know the layout of the entire building. So even though they had, uh, you know, the maps and stuff shown uh, or on display throughout the building, it, it was still kind of confusing how to get to some of the places. But uh, I wanted to mention a few other Xbox Live titles that looked really, really good. Uh, one is called Shank. It's a platform shooter mash-em-up type of game. Uh, you got this guy, he runs around, 
Uh, he's got dual revolvers, uh, like a machete, and he's also got a chainsaw. So that's kind of a fun masher. Another one is called Limbo. It's pretty simple, actually. It's, it's basically a puzzle game, and its graphics is basically it's like silhouette-type graphics, where everything's a silhouette. And you got kind of like a moon in the background, but it's a puzzle game. It looks uh, like it, it could uh, be a good waste of many, many hours. And then there was um, the sequel to The Dishwasher. Dishwasher 2 uh, Ninja Smile, I believe is what it's called. That one looks really, really good. Kind of like an anime hand sketched type of animation. We even got to talk to James Silva a little bit. What's really cool about that was, you know, he was listening to a lot of people, how they were saying how, how difficult the game was. And he kind of took that into consideration and tried to scale it back quite a bit. Just from kind of chatting with him a little bit, he seemed a little disappointed that his demo for PAX was a little more difficult than he, he wanted it to be. So it's kind of neat to actually hear the developers listening to people and kind of trying to make everything more appealing to their audience. But besides that, like I said, the other thing they were trying to push was a lot of hardware 3D glasses and gaming glasses and stuff like that, which was... How big was the 3D stuff there? Because they're starting to push the new LCD TVs with 3D and all 3D movies and everything. So was there a big push for having games in 3D? Um, NVIDIA and Antic had uh, a lot of you know 3D glasses type of hardware where... NVIDIA, I guess, was really, really pushing their 3D glasses. From what I heard when people were walking by, they kept asking and really pushing, hey, did you come check these out? Did you try playing games with the 3D glasses and stuff like that? So that seemed kind of a turnoff. It just seems like everyone's jumping on this 3D bandwagon right now. Okay, and uh, did you meet anyone from the forums or anyone from around? At I mean, who was there, basically? Uh, we got to run into a bunch of people, actually. There was um, Twig from the forums and his wife, Krista. Um, we spent a lot of time with them throughout the weekend. Uh, Chris Palladino and Heather Palladino, of course. Um, we also ran into Zeus Hates You from the forums and his girlfriend, Kim. Luckily, we were able to run into Ruler of Eden and his dad. I think his dad is uh, JR8 Rules. His name is Joe. So we got to actually run into them at the end of uh, Saturday for a little bit. And uh, there were a few other people that had stopped and, you know, talked to Chris because they recognized Chris and whatnot. And, you know, the gamer, the gamer cast shirts and stuff that we were wearing. Yeah, it was a good time. You know, it's always nice to, to meet people from the forums and spend time with them. You know, that was probably the best part of the whole, the whole experience. Uh, showroom floor, like I said, was a little bit small. Panels were really good, and uh, people were getting involved with the panels, which were really good to see. But um, from what I heard, uh, there were uh, rumors going on that they're already looking to move to the the other convention center in Boston. So next year it could be possibly at a, a new location. And uh, hopefully Sony will have something to show. That was the biggest disappointment. Okay, then. We can move on. Ivan... You brought up the topic this week of last week. They announced iPhone OS 4.0. Indeed. Which is going to feature many new uh, gaming functionality. Would you like to expound on that? I don't know a whole lot about it other than they are planning on developing a uh, kind of Xbox Live service for the iPhone. So you'll be able to join friends and playing games and have achievements and whatever their equivalent of a gamer score is kind of thing. Back in the day which was a Wednesday, by the way. There was a company, I, I forget their name. They developed a game called Aurora Faint, which was a kind of match three. It, it was a lot like Puzzle Quest without the role-playing parts. By role-playing parts, I mean like the walk around, talk to people, do quests kind of thing. You still had power-ups and you match three to do damage to your opponent, that kind of stuff. And it was really, really super buggy and had lots of problems. And the developers seemed kind of uh, apathetic towards fixing a lot of the issues. And at one point I had read somebody who I kind of dismissed as just kind of uh, complaining that the company was really developing a um, 
kind of like a, a Xbox Live Arcade thing called Open Faint, and that their Aurora Faint thing was just kind of a way to get their name out there, to get a game going, and to get these other companies involved. And um, if you're into the iPhone gaming scene, you'll know that um, they actually did a decent job of it. Aurora Faint is still kind of mediocre, but uh, the Open Faint thing is pretty cool. You can you can have a friends list, you can earn achievements in games, and anytime you go to the App Store, you know, probably 40% or more of the games you find on there have this Open Faint thing um, attached to it. So they're going to have some competition now, apparently. But if Apple makes the matchmaking service, Apple's endorsing it, Apple's doing everything for it, won't they just win out? Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, who would use the third-party one if there's a first-party one that's supported and probably be awesome compared to what they can do? Right. And Apple's certainly going to have a lot more dollars to throw it at something like this than any third-party developer is. Yeah, and, and the third-party guys can't even change the OS, whereas Apple can say, eh, we can change the OS to put a feature in. Right. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, uh, we always go back to Blizzard, but it's kind of like Blizzard and World of Warcraft, how third parties develop add-ons to modify the game and then over time, Blizzard sees things that people want, and they see all the additions and things, and they'll just incorporate it into World of Warcraft. And at that point, it's like, well, why even bother competing? So, like, Quest Helper is a good example. In World of Warcraft, you do these quests, and there's a, a add-on called Quest Helper, which kind of points you in the right direction. It gives you a, a path to follow if you've got a bunch of quests, the optimal path. And then Blizzard recently introduced their own version, and, you know, it's different, but it's, you know, it's better because it's got all the hooks into WoW, they know all the APIs, the calls to make to actually make things work better. So, you know, people quit using third-party stuff when first-party stuff becomes available. So that's kind of how I'm feeling this is going to go. It's like, well, if Apple has hooks into the OS, they know all the, the tricks, the ins and outs and everything, I mean... Yeah, uh, this open faint thing is kind of doomed, as far as I can tell. Did they announce a time frame when OS 4 is coming out? I believe they announced um, sometime this summer. They didn't announce a date, I don't think. June sticks in my head, but that might be just speculation from other people. But uh, I believe summer was when they had planned on it. I mean, it, it's going to include a bunch of other stuff, but uh, I know a lot of our listeners don't necessarily care about the iPhone stuff, but the gaming thing was kind of cool. Okay, so the only other big thing we had this week was the contest, and I didn't think we'd get so many entries. We got a lot. Wow, we actually got a lot? Yeah, more than uh, we have shirts for. Wow. So we have to pick stuff then. We don't have to actually do it right now. I mean, we can do it during the week. Just look at, pick which ones you want, because there's like a number here. Next week we can announce all the winners, because I didn't get a chance to look at all these some some are okay. Some are essentially roll call questions. So if you win, we'll announce next week all the winners for the for the uh, contest. Apart from that, we're kind of out of stuff. And since this, we're people low again, so oh wait, he's here. Nice. Should I invite him in? Oh sure. What the hell? He can say hi. Bet you ten bucks. The first thing he says is sorry. Wait, he's not even answering. There he is. How y'all doing? Yeah. And and also joining us is Bob right now at. Uh, 25 minutes into the show. Yeah, that's how. That's how I do it. I'm considerate. I'm considerate and of, of my fellow podcasters who have other things to do. It's okay. At least you're here to say hi. Say hi, Bob. Hey. A bunch of sexy motherfuckers. Except for Phil. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of forgot about that whole thing. From, uh, what is it, 187? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, ignoring Phil, huh? Yeah, that's pretty cool. It is. All the that's what all the all the cool kids are doing. Ah, okay, Bob. Would you like to impart us any wisdom here at the end of the show? End. It's only been half hour. Okay. Well, end of the show. I like to thank God and Jesus Christ for making this possible. The championship wouldn't have been mine without. I'm sorry. Different speech. Nice. Well played. You didn't miss much, Bob. Don't worry. You missed. Uh... Phil's packs coverage, and you missed the iPhone stuff, so you actually did miss a lot, but you know. things that I wasn't involved in or don't own, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, things that I do not care about. Yes. 
How's the movie doing, Bob? Fine. Good money. No one's watching it. Wow, really? It was good. I saw it. We saw it. It was good. We liked it. I saw it yesterday. So let's take a look. Let's take a look how we're not doing. Does this mean you're going to have to do Madagascar 12? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not doing that great. It hasn't even broke production budget yet. It's, what, third week? How is it that Clash of the Titans is making as much money as How to Train Your Dragon in half the week's? Is it because people are trying to just compare it to the 1981 version, or I guess sequels make money. Nostalgia. It's it's a decent movie. It's a fun movie. Oh, I'm not saying it was bad. Sequels make money. That's why everybody keeps remaking things rather than making new movies. And this is exactly why. It doesn't matter how good of a movie you make, sequels are gonna make or remakes are gonna make more money. We're the same way. I mean, how hard? How many new games do we buy that don't end in like a number? <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, it's really got to be something spectacular. Oh, sorry, Bob. It was a good movie, though. Yeah. Okay. We would like to put an end on the show real quick so people can start uploading to me. Uh, I want to throw out a few ham sandwiches to the uh, Pax East group. Uh, Twig and his wife. Uh, Zeus hates you and his girlfriend. Zeus loves you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruler of Eden. Uh, let's see, uh, Junior 8 Rules, who is Joe? <laughs> Junior 8 Rules, who is played by Joe. <laughs> Justin from Toronto. I think he goes on the forums by Caden. He does some community stuff up in Toronto. Had a good weekend with those guys. Ham sandwich to Bob for putting out a good movie and not getting some respect. Yay! No respect. But at least the five people who saw it liked it, which is important to us. <laughs>